ladies and gentlemen, it is all about Ryan Shirky at the moment. Moses Caicedo. Moses Caicedo who? We've forgotten about Moses Caicedo. Every bit of news is about Ryan Shirky at the moment. Let's go. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Over the past 24 to 48 hours, the news in regards to Ryan Cherokee has escalated in uh, exponential manner. Um, not that long ago, Julian Laurence, in fact, it was yesterday, Julian Laurence came up with an article saying that Chelsea are very interested in in uh, Ryan Shirky and today Julian Laurens has backed it up by saying Ryan Shirky is keen to join Chelsea Football Club as well so look I'm excited I know a lot of you guys are excited about this particular player youngster 19 year old has a lot of flair has that x factor exactly what we need at Chelsea Football Club you know obviously Nkunku will be driving the creativity uh, side of things but it's always good to have a, a backup um, and at times I think both of them could play in tandem so let's see how this materializes but just like every other transfer news there's there, there's starting to be some twist in this one as well so obviously there's uh, certain journalists will come out and say yeah it, you know it's progressing Chelsea one team he wants Chelsea it's gonna happen and then there's the other side of the coin which we'll touch on very soon where they'll say Leon's not interested in selling him. Now the price has increased. This is the thing. Because Chelsea, at Chelsea Football Club, we don't do anything in secret. We do everything so publicly. So people like us, we can make content out of it. People like you guys, who can comment on it. Nothing is ever kept in, in a private matter. So now there's some conversations going on that Leon potentially don't want to sell him. They'll sell anyone else, but not him because he's seen as a prize jewel for them. Um, even though they're in financial strife, but it's all a mechanism to drive the price up, isn't it? That That's what we're getting to. Uh, next up, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Vincent had something to say about Ryan Shirky as well. Chelsea have stepped up their interest in Ryan Shirky and have been in direct contact with the Frenchman's representative in recent days. Now, Felix Johnston yesterday. Uh, if you don't follow Felix, please make sure go follow him on Twitter. He was the first one uh, exclusively saying that. Uh, you know, Chelsea Chelsea have spoken to Ryan Shirky's representatives just to get an understanding as to, you know, where matters are, you know, if, if he's keen on a move, you know, this, that, the other, I suppose. And try, trying to get a bit of a, a, a idea, a ballpark figure as to how much he may cost. And the news that was out yesterday was it was supposedly something to be around 40 million euros. But we shall see if everyone holds on to that particular amount. Simon Phillips uh, coming out and, and putting out a tweet from whoever this person is. What's the name of this person? Jacques Talbot, chief football correspondent of Transfer.com. Must be um, some French correspondent. Ron Shirky recently changed agents to Faiza Lamari have also been informed that a sale from Lyon this window is very possible. Frenchman has been linked with Chelsea and Newcastle. I think, yeah, I did see the Newcastle link earlier on in the window. Uh, this is Simon Phillips again. Wrote this in an extensive update on Cherky this morning over, um, yeah, I think, Simon Phillips. Uh, what's This is his one of his accounts. Si Phillips talks Chelsea. There you go. Um, this is what he was saying. Moves... Uh, moves have been made, but I did hear early on Tuesday morning that Chelsea were now seriously considering making an offer to sign Shirky, who they believe is gettable this summer window. The same sources source who told me the Shirky news first has said that it is Lauren Stewart, who is the main one pushing for this move and that Chelsea are broadly happy with the conditions of the deal told to them by Leon in an inquiry. So look, Lawrence Stewart, obviously his background from Monaco, he's got an understanding of League One, so that makes sense. Um, Chelsea have monitored Ryan Shirky in Euros extensively, so this whole link of, of wanting Ryan Shirky is not too far-fetched. Also, the fact Ryan Shirky is 19, um, he's got that flair about himself, you know. This is probably one of the reasons why we didn't go for someone like Jao Felix. Um, Jao Felix would have cost a lot of money, whether it's loan, whether it's transfer, and his wages are ex exorbitant amount. Um, so we've always, in this transfer window, I think it's clear to see there is a focus on finding alternatives who uh, who can potentially do the same job, but for a cheaper amount of money, whether it's uh, 
cheap in the sense of transfer fee or, or, or in wages. We are looking at somewhat of an economical solution, uh, not necessarily just throw money left, right and center. And Ryan Shirky is a sensational talent. He is one of the talents that is getting talked about a lot in world football at the moment. So um, I like the approach. I like the way you don't necessarily have to go out there and break the bank on every single player. Uh, find, you know, key, key transfers like such and then uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, of course, I would have loved Shia Felix at Chelsea Football Club, but he, he is going to cost a lot of money. So there's a lot of factors uh, in regards to Shirky, Ryan Shirky that matches with Chelsea's philosophy uh, under this new ownership and under the, under the new board that we've created um, earlier on this year around January. So, yeah, the age factor, she's cheaper. Um, you know, the fact that we've got a relationship with Leon as well. Uh, Leon financially, they're in trouble. So there's a lot of things that's going on uh, which kind of favors us in this situation so far. like It seems like we're the, we're the only club that is absolutely interested in Ryan Cherky. I did see some news about Newcastle earlier on, but I'm not seeing that anymore. Chelsea have sounded out John Texter, the owner of Leon, over his willingness to part with Cherky. So this is the other side of the story now. But it is understood that other than Lukeba, and Favre, uh, he's unwilling to part with anyone else. Shirky is valued at £50 million now. And this is the particular individual. Let me see if I can get this individual's name. Ed Ahrens. Ed Ahrens is the one who's providing the counter story to this. So you've got Julian Laurence, you've got Bobby Vincent, and you've got many other journalists who are talking about the the transfer of Ryan Shirky in a in a uh, the the pros of of him to Chelsea and then Ed Aaron's is now talking about the the negative side of it which uh, kind of balances everything out all of a sudden the price is at fifty million and all of a sudden John Texter apparently don't want to sell Ryan Shirky he's looking to sell other players just won't sell Shirky um, and the value apparently is uh, fifty million so you won't sell him but then there is a price taxi the bottom line is there is always a value there's always a price for for any player um no one is untouchable especially you know if you're a selling club like leon so look 40 million euros was touted to be the price uh, yesterday and now today we're looking at 50 million pounds so we do need to watch where this price is going by two few Chelsea do fancy getting Ryan Shirky as their number one selection in the number 10 position. So um, watch this ramp up, hopefully, over the next couple of days. Obviously, we've, we're going to be flying out to the United States for our preseason tour. Um, you know, potentially, we would like to see Ryan Shirky be part of um, you know, Chelsea Football Club set up very, very soon. But of course, all focus is on Moses Caicedo. Moses Caicedo news, man, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on Thursday. You guys are still Wednesday evening, uh, wherever you guys are watching from. Soon you'll be on Thursday. I'm, I'm worried, man. Like, why isn't this getting done quickly enough? I'm not worried that he's not going to be a Chelsea player. I'm just worried that how long is this going to take? I would have liked to see Moses Caicedo be at Chelsea. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, here's another blockbuster news from Felix in regards to the striker position. I think some of you guys have wanted this to happen um, as you're not completely convinced with other targets that we link with in the likes of Vlahovic, in the likes of Lutaro Martinez, um, Kolomoani as well, to a certain degree. I like Kolomoani. But this is coming from Felix saying, exclusive Paul Winstantly is trying to push a plan and reach a consensus with other directors to move for Ivan Tony in January. If you guys remember, Ivan Tony has got a massive ban up until January. He can't play. I don't think he can even train. Um, and apparently Paul Winstantly is pushing for this. He, he would rather wait for someone like Ivan Tony. And our owners, they, they, they talk very highly in regards to Brentford. So uh, you best believe there could be some sort of a relationship there. One thing about Todd Bowley, he makes key relationships out there. There's a lot of clubs that we have some really, really good relationships with. Um, so, so potentially there could be something there. Sources close to the player confirmed that Winston Lee has been speaking to Tony's camp since May. It's his direct plan and Tony would be open to a move. Ivan Tony, ladies and gentlemen, further goes on to say, PW is trying to, Paul Winston Lee is trying to convince the rest of the hierarchy, but the elite striker list for this summer still remains at three names revealed. 
Vlahovic is looked by a different director and Pochettino directly. Lataro interest called after Inter's asking price and bids for Lukaku. I don't want to deal with Inter Milan, seriously. Chelsea think Inter have overvalued their players and over, uh, undervalued Chelsea players. I'm told strong words were heard. Now, there you go. Now, it's true. True talk. Further goes on to say, random, but Raheem Sterling has an offer from Saudi Arabia, but is not expected to move at this point. I would find it very strange if Raheem Sterling moved now. Uh, maybe another couple of years' time, you could probably see Raheem Sterling in Saudi Arabia making the millions. Now, coming back to the Ivan Tony situation, I think Ivan Tony as a striker is an unbelievable striker. We've already seen that. There is no doubting his talent. There is no doubting what type of damage he could potentially do in a Chelsea setup along with Nkunku, Enzo Fernandez, Mudrik, Maduek, and all the talents that we have. He would cook. He will definitely cook. I mean, this guy was banging close to 20 goals, if not plus 20 plus goals at Brentford. Um, and no disrespect to Brentford. Brentford's a quality team, and, you know, with the likes of Embuemo and so on and so forth. If he can do that kind of damage at Brentford, you'd think he could bring that skill set to Chelsea Football Club and combine that. And, and also, along with Pochettino's guidance, could could truly turn into an absolute monster. I think Pochettino would love a striker like Ivan Tony. My only concern, once again, only, you know, said in a very, very light manner, but it does hold a lot of weight. We all know his betting issues. He's an addict. He really is. He's a gambling addict. Can we somehow manage him from that perspective? Can we guide him, you know, so that this addiction is out of his life? He's had over 250 charges of, uh, you know, gambling incidents where not only he gambled uh, for his team Brentford to win, but there were th there were games where he gambled against Brentford to lose, uh, specifically the ones where where he wasn't featuring. So it is a problem. Um, the other problem, obviously, the most obvious one, uh, the other one, uh, aside from the gambling one, is. He's not going to be around till January. So what type of player is going to come back uh, after that is going to be something interesting to see. Can we, you know, get his fitness level up? Can his sharpness still be there? So all of that needs to be considered. But perhaps we could get this guy on a cutthroat sort of price, you know, on a discounted price from Brentford. So there could be that situation um, because in January, you know, his stocks would be somewhat down and then um, potentially we could get a bit of a discount. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know, let me know how you feel about Ivan Tony. Are there concerns? What are your concerns? And would you be keen to be uh, you know, going for someone like Ivan Tony and waiting maybe till January? Uh, because right now there is no one really worth going gun ho about. So let me know in the comment section what you feel about that. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Spurs have Conor Gallagher. So it's some um, uh, outgoing uh, news right now. Spurs have Conor Gallagher in their sights. Maurizio Pochettino is an admirer of Gallagher, and a deal will come down to whether or not he is deemed as can be sold this summer. He could cost up to fifty million. Look, I think, I honestly think, a couple of things. He's not Chelsea quality. I know some of you guys are going to get upset about this. Majority of you guys probably will agree on it. He's not Chelsea quality. Um, I think he's proper Chelsea. He definitely is proper Chelsea. He, he would play for free for Chelsea Football Club. He loves Chelsea Football Club. And look, there is certain quality in there uh, uh, with Conor Gallagher, but he just doesn't suit uh, a particular team that is looking to hold the ball a lot more. Um, for a counter-attacking team, I think he'll work to the T. Uh, there's some news that that perhaps Spurs, you know, looking at... Uh, Hoiberg's replacement and and someone like Conor Gallagher could could potentially fit that. So look, if if we can get fifty million for Conor Gallagher, that's a deal. That is one hundred percent a deal, ladies and gentlemen. And we should be looking at the future. You know, Andre Santos, Chesare Kasady, Kani Chukamika. We've already got Enzo Fernandez. We're looking to add Moses Caicedo. He's just not going to get game time, in my opinion. So it's in his best interest if he wants to be part of the English Euro team to ensure that he gets a lot of game time. And I think uh, Spurs could potentially provide that game time for him. Tottenham are eyeing Chelsea's Conor Gallagher as Hoiberg replacement. There you go. The English midfielder could cost around 50 million in the market. Um, this is coming from Mike McGrath. 50 million. That's a deal. 
that is a deal and a half for Conor Gallagher. I take that every day of the week. Chelsea are open to selling Trevor Chalabar, another player on the way, um, potentially on the way out this summer for the right price. It's understood Chalabar is behind fellow centre backs Silva, Fofana, Buddy Shield, and Colwell in the pecking order. Mauricio Pochettino only wants four centre backs in the first team squad next season. Makes sense. If we if we go back to four at the back, which I think we will under Mauricio Pochettino. Two CBs, not that many games to go with next season either. We don't have Europe, no level of European football. Four centre-backs should be enough. Four centre-backs, 100%. Even if there is an injury, you still got two more centre-backs to play with. Um, and Colwell, this this should give... Th there's two things happening here. One, it should give Colwell confidence that if someone like Chalaba goes, then Colwell, there shouldn't be any more confusion about your Chelsea future. You're 100% part of the plan and you will get game time. Chalaba, once again, he's got aspirations apparently to be in the Euro team uh, for, for England uh, next season, I think next year, I believe, Euros. So he needs game time. And and for Chalaba's sake as well, I rate Chalaba. I think he's a very, very good defender. But once again, he seems to be, uh, you know, a bit of a surplus to requirement at the moment. And there's some interest from Italian sides in the likes of Inter Milan, in the likes of AC Milan as well. If there's an opportunity to... Uh, find a good deal for Chalaba. Let's do it, and uh, for his sake as well, he deserves to play week week in week out. He's he's a top quality defender. There is no doubt about that. I know there's been some mistakes here and there, of course, no doubt about that. Some monumental mistakes as well, but I think that comes with not playing often enough. You know, um, we've seen when he's consistently playing last season earlier on, uh, not last season, the season before uh, the season, the the season where we got sanctioned and ownership issues. Uh, earlier on in that season, Trevor Chalaba was was very good. Uh, he was instrumental in, in that Super Cup, if you guys remember, um, and that early stages of that season. So, look, if we can find a deal, let's do it. Now, some Lewa Colwell news. There seems to be some parts of the, uh, you know, journalistic world out there. I think it came from Talk Sport. I don't know when Talk Sport started doing transfer rumors. Um, they were saying that, you know, there's strong interest from Liverpool. And uh, look, it's been backed up by other journalists, specifically coming from Liverpool's side of things, that Liverpool are keen on uh, Lee Wakowa, but Fabrizio Romano, once again, has quashed all of this information. Liverpool are not negotiating with Chelsea because they know he's untouchable. He's not uh, for sale. Mm -hmm. Chelsea's message is clear. Colwell is the future of Chelsea Football Club. So, look, I hope all of this is giving Lee Wan Colwell some confidence. I mean, Fabrizio Romano has been staunch about this, regularly stating Chelsea don't want to sell him. It's a bottom line. Oh, there you go, untouchable. So hopefully the the meeting that is scheduled between Lee Wan Colwell and, and Maurizio Pochettino soon um, goes in the right manner and that you know, Lee Wan Colwell ends up signing that new contract that that potentially Chelsea are looking to uh, put him into um, and, and make him an, an important player at Chelsea Football Club. So let's see what happens there. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea won four players out before July 17th. Lukaku, Ziyech, Aubameyang and Hudson Adoy, whose agents are working on some solutions in Italy. Um, we've got some news on Hudson Adoy as well and, and one particular Italian club uh, manager, ex-Chelsea manager, is looking to perhaps uh reunite with Kalamantan Adoy. But yeah, these four players, please, let's move by the 17th. Not many more days left, four more days left uh, until the 17th. Lukaku, Ziyech, Aubameyang and Hudson Adoy find a home ASAP. Find a home. With Lukaku, you already know who, where your home is. Please, get into Milan to come with 40 million immediately. Maurizio Sarri, Lazio have added Kalamantan Adoy onto their list of potential signings. There you go. Look, Sari, come, come and help us out. He, he obviously broke through under Sari, uh, that particular Sari season, and then obviously got injured as well. Kalamantan Adoy, look, his stocks are so, so down at the moment. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much he's going to go for. I'd be surprised if we can even get somewhere around 10 million pounds, uh, if that. Um, but he needs to go. There is no future at Chelsea Football Club for this player. He flopped at Bundesliga, which is crazy to think. Chelsea winger Diego Moreira has landed in the UK after playing with Portugal's under-21s. He's still sorting out his visa after his free transfer from Benfica, but he should soon be in Chelsea colours. This is from Nizar Kinsella. Once again, 
I'm keen to see what are the plans for these young players that are coming through. I think some of them we can see direct um, idea behind it, like Ryan Cherky is going to be part of the first team. Maybe even Matthias Franca could be part of the first team if we do end up getting Ryan Cherky and Matthias Franca. But Diego Moreira, um, Angelo Gabriel, all of these players, what are the plans? I'm keen to see what happens with uh, these youngsters like Diego Moreira who are, who are hyped. Uh, to be you know, superstars down the track. Now, some sponsorship news, ladies and gentlemen. People are not happy about some of this stuff that's happening. I want to give you my opinion. I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section as well. First up, Oman Air and Chelsea's three-year partnership is one of the most valuable at this level. So this isn't like shirt sponsors, sponsorship. This is you know, other sort of partnerships on the side. According to well-informed source, the sponsorship deal will be worth close to $3 million a season for the team's global airline partner. This is a global airline partner. $3 million per year, why not? Let's let's bag that. Let's take that. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with this. Oman Air, you know, it's, it's a lucrative airline. It's on the way up. So let's see. Let's see where this relationship ends up going at the moment. $3 million a year. No problems. Let's bag that now. Here is the shirt sponsorship stuff. Yeah, people are not happy about this. People are going off at the ownership, uh, the board, this, that, the other. Chelsea are looking for just $25 million for a shirt sponsor and will include their women's team as part of the package. Um, people are not happy. This is what I want to say. and It's been well summarized in a particular tweet um, that was... Uh, that was uh, done by one of my lovely um, mates who has been part of this um, channel previously, Jonathan Mann. If you guys know him, uh, the originals, then you know him. Do give him a follow as well on on Twitter. He summed it up perfectly, and I, I absolutely uh, you know, agree with his sentiment over here. Reasons for lowering our sponsorship fee, it's for only one year. So whatever transaction we're doing now, it's it's a one-year deal. Uh, next season, after after the coming season, we will renegotiate. And hopefully, we come into Europe again and we can get those lucrative offers once again. We finished 12th. It's not pretty when you finish 12th. It's not easy to entice good sponsorship and, and ask for a lot of money. No Champions League, as I said, no um, Europe. Paramount deal blocked. I don't know why that deal has been blocked. Someone commented to me that uh, apparently Paramount shows other leagues in the United States um, and, and that would rival with, you know, Premier League stuff if they were to show Premier League as well. I'm like, in, in Australia, there, there are, uh, you know, sort of broadcasters that show multiple leagues in one. So I don't understand why that should be an issue. And why is it an issue if it's just in the United States? So once again, the Paramount situation... Seems like unnecessarily it's been blocked by the Premier League. Fans revolt off stake. We know what happened. Would have been an embarrassing small club move, not to mention glorify the thousands of deaths every year. Um, so, yeah, look, for me, ladies and gentlemen, I know 25 million seems, yes, ridiculous. Like, stake offered us 40 million to come down to 25 million. But we have to appreciate the backlash that happened uh, because of stakes so um, that's just not going to happen and then the we find ourselves in a in a predicament where as i said no europe no um at the moment we need to build our image again build our brand again and i'm sure um come at the end of this upcoming season hopefully we we somehow come back into europe again we shall find ourselves with a top sponsorship again um i know some of the top clubs out there are getting 50 60 million sponsorships like in the likes of man united in the likes of man city liverpool we will get back into those levels we, we're in the we're in the um we, we're just on the way to come back now i suppose so look it, it is only one year hopefully there's still 25 million um i know it's not exciting but it is what it is. Otherwise. Let me know in the comment section how you truly feel about it. Now, finally, some footages in regards to training sessions. Connor, Ampadu, Kepa, and Fofana all back at Cobham today. Some lovely pictures of these players. Ampadu is back. I, I think he will probably be part of that others group. Um, I can't see how you know, Chelsea see a future in him. I think he's going to be one of those players that's going to be sold as well. Kepa looks like he's going to be our number one goalkeeper. I wish him luck. 
Wesley Fofana is back as well, ladies and gentlemen. So um, some nice, lovely pictures um, from the training ground. I thought this is the one that stuck out nicely for me. This one I want to cherish. I just didn't quit. Check this out from Reese James, ladies and gentlemen. His tattoo on the leg. I just didn't quit. Now, it could have many connotations. I think one of them being is obviously all the injuries that he copped last season, missed the World Cup, um, and a devastating you know, uh, season with, with Chelsea. Um, there's a podcast that's going on uh, where his father said the same thing. Um, the beautiful... The beautiful game podcast, I think they're, they're the ones. Do check that out. Where Reese James' father was saying that Reese James found it extremely difficult last season, and you know, partly that, that could be the reason why he got this tattoo. I just didn't quit, and also maybe a bit of a bit of a um, snipe at some of the players that has left Chelsea Football Club, uh, potentially quitting as well. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you felt about everything that we spoke about today specifically in regards to Ryan Shirky and Ivan Tony in the comment section, let me know. Smash the like button, guys. Let's try and get to... We got to 500 likes easily. If we can try and get to 700 likes um, for this particular video, that would be sensational. Subscribe as well. Make sure you subscribe. We're getting closer to 25,000 subscribers. Till next time. See ya.